Well, Valentine's Day is the perfect day to begin the journey of self-love. Motivational speaker Amy D is here to talk about how to no longer be afraid of who or what you want to be. Welcome yeah. back. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Yes, it's here. So, so I thought maybe I'd start by differentiating between self-love, self-esteem, and self-confidence. Okay. So when I think about self-love, self-esteem kind of goes under that umbrella. And that's a continuous state of being. Self-confidence is situational. So I could have a lot of self-love, but I could sit down in front of a trigonometry test and have no self-confidence whatsoever. So does that sort of make mm -hmm. sense mm -hmm. to you? And so um, self-love is something that we, we can't get through, like me motivationally speaking to you for one hour or reading an inspirational book. Self, because self-love isn't just a state of feeling good. Self-love is appreciation for one's self that we grow through actions, such as actionable steps towards positive health, psychological health, and spiritual health. So self-love is something that matures as we respond well to life. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I think so, yeah. Yeah. And so the truth is we're all born with a, a lot of self-love. We know our kids when they're little kids and they just think they're something else and they have all of that. But as we go through life, things happen. <clears throat> and, you know, it's our parents sometimes. Sometimes it's the habits that they have or really well-meaning but maybe say not the right things. It's peers. It's when we start comparing ourselves to others. It's all those things that start to diminish and kind of lower our self-love and the good news about this is it's learned and we know if it's learned we can get better at it because our neurological habits are create our patterns are created by the habits that we keep so we can change it so what's the first step to change it so there are so many steps so i'm going to just talk about a few today so one is really stepping into your authentic self and, and wondering to yourself, really feeling what that is to you. Because so often we want a connection with other human beings. The truth, it's good to have connections. We need social support. Um, it makes us live longer. It makes us happier. But sometimes in order to make those connections, we kind of diminish who we really are. And so we have to remember that we keep, have to keep that authentic self because if we don't keep that, we don't get that biological connection either when we're not being ourselves. So the second thing is, is to extract the I am. And so, so often we make our behaviors, we identify with our behaviors. Our behaviors are something outside ourselves. It's something we do, it's not who we are. But we say things like, I am bad, instead of I did a bad thing. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Or um, I am dumb, or I did a dumb thing right? Mm -hmm. And so try to use language that extracts the behavior from who we are because we identify too closely with behaviors. We are who we are and we're going to make mistakes along the way. We're going to mess up and that's just part of being that. And in order to get closer to other people, that's authentic is just saying, hey, I messed up. Allow yourself to be a little vulnerable. Doesn't it feel good when someone is vulnerable back to you? Makes you recognize we're all human. Yeah. It's good stuff. You can't really connect to someone that portrays like this perfect little, you know. Persona. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. All right, stay with us more on self-love right after this.